Not really. All right. Hey, it's empty. I'll be right back. It's an amazing spring day out there. I can't wait to cook. We're going to do some scallops, but they're going to be paired up with a choux pastry, a pâté au choux, which is very simple to make on the stovetop. We'll bake them in the oven to finish them off. And they have some day bolt scallops to go inside them. And we're gonna finish it off with a light wine sauce. Amazing, wait till you try it. I am also going to make a little side dish. I love my carrots, especially when you cook them very slowly with some butter and some onion or shallots. Look at the size of this onion. I decided to use an onion today. And I'm going to finish that off with a little bit of lemon, some citron, some zest. That's going to be uh, incredible as well. So let's get cooking. Okay. So you want to do the things that take the longest. And one of the things is uh, preheating the oven. So I will start that at 400 for the uh, pâté au chaud. And in this pan over here, I slivered some uh, of the, that large onion as well as a package of uh, the small baby carrots. I have two tablespoons of butter in my Debye French steel mineral pan. Now this is the real deal. If you want uh, something to really be able to cook well with in the kitchen, this is what they use in 90% of the uh, kitchens in France as well as the restaurants. So we're going to put that on a uh, high heat over here and we're going to let that for about a half an hour because that's going to caramelize. And now we'll start working on the pâté chaud. Okay, starting on the pâté au chaud, this is very simple. What you want to do is start off with six tablespoons of butter and then uh, a cup of milk. Some people use water, but let me tell you, there is a big difference in the flavor to me. Your personal preference, but go with the milk. I don't think you'll be, uh, you'll be unhappy with that decision. Now, this is my little uh, addition to this. You want a little touch of allspice, just a little pinch over there. That's going to give it, a once again, a je ne sais quoi. So we'll put that on a, on a hot fire over here and we're going to let that uh, so that it starts to bubble and then we'll add our flour. Oh, my oven is preheated. Listen to that little chime, isn't that funny? Instead of the irritating bell, it's kind of cool. Okay, so this is uh, boiling thoroughly. We're going to add a, a teaspoon of salt. Now this is a coarse sea salt, so I have to make sure this blends in very nicely. Let it melt in there. And now we're going to add our flour and you can do it all in one batch like that. No need to do, be gentle about it. And we're gonna fold this in very nicely until it starts to incorporate and then start to look like dough. And we're going to put that on a low heat to dry it out even more. Okay, as you can see, it kind of looks like dough over here. You pick it up, it has a dough-like consistency, but it still is a little too moist. So we're going to return this to the fire, a low fire, and I'm stirring constantly on this until it finally starts to show signs that it's drying out. And how that happens is you can see a little film of the pastry at the bottom of the pan. Then you know that it's perfect. Then you just have to let it cool off. And it's perfect. So let's let it cool off. All right, it's cooled off nicely. And uh, I could do this uh, next step several ways. You can do it with a KitchenAid. You can do it with a blender. But um, sometimes I just like to get my hands dirty. We're going to put in four eggs. Now, uh, some of the recipes say that you should put in the eggs one at a time, and I don't see the need for that, honestly, because I've done it uh, both ways, many ways, and you can do it either way. Now, we're going to stir this in very gently because you don't, you don't want it coming all outside of the pan and all over you. It can get kind of messy. This process is gonna take a few minutes for me to stir it this way. Once again, you could use your KitchenAid, and that works beautifully, honestly. But I like doing things by hand sometimes. It's just the process of cooking in the kitchen. To me, it's fun. So once I incorporate this, I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, I'm checking on my carrots and onions and uh, they're starting to brown up very nicely. A little too nice, nicely. So what I'm going to do is add a half, half a cup of uh, white wine and I'm going to deglaze the pan a little bit as this cooks. And mm, these carrots are gonna be, well, drunk. <laughs> Lucky carrots. 
And once I deglaze this pan a little bit, I'm going to add some butter. Yeah, I'm also adding it now. This is going to be uh, about uh, two tablespoons more. You want to be generous with the butter when you make this dish with the carrots because it really does help to sweeten and emulsify. Okay, that's beautiful. So let's cover that up. And once again, that's going to stay on for oh, another good 15, 20 minutes. It takes a while. Some people say, oh, it takes 15, 20 minutes. It takes a half an hour to about 45 minutes to do this so it can caramelize very nicely. So no rush here, okay? All right. It's time to... Uh, now, you can uh, use a little piping bag uh, to do this, but you know what? Uh, that's a little too refined for me. I love to make it look a little bit more rustic. So we're going to put it into about one or two inch balls over here. Now we're going to let these just rest a little bit over here and we're going to uh, cut them open and we will put in our scallops. So once these cool down, which will be in about five minutes, we'll work on our scallops. Scallops cook really fast. You don't want to overcook them. That's the one thing you want to remember. Okay, I have several tablespoons of butter in my very hot pan over here and that's how you want to cook scallops over a medium to high heat so that you can sear in the uh, wonderful juices and the flavors. We're gonna add some uh, sea salt over here, coarse sea salt, and a couple of grinds of the pepper mill. Remember, these scallops do not cook long. Last thing you wanna do is overcook them because at that point, they become rubbery and disgusting. So, all right. Put them on the seasoned side down so we can just kind of lock in the flavor over here. And you wanna separate them in the pan so that uh, the heat actually gets to all of them. If you put them too close, sometimes uh, they don't uh, cook very well. So you wanna do it in small batches. All right, that's only gonna stand for a couple of minutes over here, and I'm gonna bump up the heat even higher. Okay, the scallops are done. And now what we have to do is finish off the sauce over here. Look at those scallops, they look absolutely gorgeous. Now to finish off the sauce, we're going to add a little bit of white wine to deglaze the pan over here. Glorious, Woo! what a sound. And we're gonna scrape off the little beautiful tidbits at the bottom over here. I've got this off the hot fire. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit over here. Ah, oh, this is going to condense and go on top of these scallops in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so the sauces have been reduced over here, this beautiful, glorious butter wine sauce. And we'll put some on each of the pâté chaud. You can put two scallops on each one, uh, depending on the size or one scallop. And we'll put the little uh, tops back on for dormant. And we'll also add a little bit of herbs. I love thyme because it's something uh, that is found in uh, French cuisine quite often. And I love the flavor of it. My parents used it all the time. We have our beautiful vegetables over here, the carrots, the baby carrots with the onions. You can use shallots and they've caramelized, they've deepened in flavor. We're gonna go really good together. And it's a little early in the day, so I'll just have a coffee right now. Not really, just kidding. <laughs> so enjoy everybody. Cook in the kitchen with your family and your friends. Enjoy the memories, they will last a lifetime. Take care and good cooking. Hey, it's empty. I'll be right back.